Welcome to NBA Now by Chat Sports. Today we are going to be discussing whether or not the Lakers really have a chance at trading for Anthony Davis this summer. I'm Hannah Kulik, aka Laker Han. You can follow me on Twitter at Hannah underscore Kulik and on Instagram at Hannah Rose Kulik. Okay, so one of the biggest storylines this offseason is going to be whether or not the Pelicans actually trade Anthony Davis. And one of the teams that is obviously going to be trying their hardest to get him is our Los Angeles Lakers. Now, Anthony Davis is one of the best players in the league. He's obviously a top NBA player when he is healthy. He's 26 years old, so he is just entering his prime. And he's truly one of those guys who can do it from both ends of the floor. It's very rare to find a talent of Anthony Davis's right now in the league. He's a tremendous passer, a tremendous scorer, rebounder, defender. He truly can do just about anything. He's been putting up killer numbers since he first joined the league. And it is no surprise that when he is healthy, many people consider him to be the second best player in the NBA right behind LeBron James. Do you guys think Anthony Davis is the second best player in the NBA behind LeBron James? Type Y for yes and N for no down below. I happen to think he is. Obviously, between him and Kevin Durant, but when Anthony Davis is healthy, he is an unbelievable franchise type of player. Now, I'm sure all you Laker fans remember the whole Anthony Davis Lakers trade drama that went down this past season just before the trade deadline, but let's do a quick little recap before we move on here. So last offseason, Anthony announced that he had signed with Clutch Sports, which is LeBron James's agent, so many people started speculating that this meant he wanted to come and play for the purple and gold and team up with LeBron James. Fast forward to a few months into this season and his reps made an announcement that AD wanted out of New Orleans and he wanted to be traded immediately. Instantly, the Lakers, of course, got involved. Information was leaked. Reportedly, the Lakers offered pretty much their entire roster besides LeBron and the Pelicans just laughed in their face because they never had any intention of trading AD to the Lakers in the first place and this honestly was the thing in my opinion that really destroyed the Lakers season. It ruined the chemistry of the team. All of the young guys were upset because of how easily the Lakers were willing to trade them and this just destroyed the entire chemistry of the team. But now the Lakers are going to be doing it all over again. Now before we break this whole scenario down and talk about some of the new developments that may actually help the Lakers and play in their favor, I want to take a quick second to remind you all to hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you are subscribed to the Chat Sports YouTube channel and also make sure you are subscribed to the Chat Sports Lakers YouTube channel. I will have that link down below for you guys. It is going to be an extremely exciting off season, a very roller coaster of a ride of an off season, and I want to make sure that you guys are not missing a single second of it. So make sure to subscribe to not only the Chat Sports YouTube down below, but also the Chat Sports Lakers YouTube channel down below. Okay, moving on. So obviously, as we all know, the Lakers' big plan this summer is to sign a max free agent. However, that is obviously much easier said than done. And if they do strike out in free agency, look for them to be going full force to try to trade for Anthony Davis. Now, Anthony Davis is going to be a free agent next summer of 2020. So I know a lot of people are saying, why don't the Lakers just wait till next summer, continue to keep our young core intact, continue to develop our young core, not have to cause all this drama and just wait for the off season and sign him when he is a free agent. However, I can understand why they would be a little skeptical of that because need I remind you, last summer we kind of went through the whole similar situation with Paul George when apparently Paul George wanted to come and play for the Lakers only to then go ahead and re-sign with the OKC Thunder. So I'm sure the Lakers want to try to avoid that situation again. Obviously, as we all know, a lot can happen in a year. But also, LeBron James signed a three-year deal with the Purple and Gold. The fourth year is a player option. We've already wasted one of those years not making the playoffs. And the, honestly, 
there is not another season to be wasted. The Lakers have to get a star this season. They have to be competitive. They have to make a deep playoff run, contend for a championship now. We do not have another season or two to continue to waste with LeBron James. Now, if I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't really think the Lakers had that much of a chance at trading for Anthony Davis this summer just because we already offered pretty much our entire roster and the Pelicans already turned us down. And in my opinion, they just don't really want to trade AD to the Lakers anyway. No one likes to do the Lakers any favors. And I just didn't think it was going to be able to happen. However, as I'm sure we all know by now, the Lakers ended up with the fourth pick in the NBA draft. No one was expecting that. They were projected to get the 11th pick. They only had about a 9% chance of getting up in that top four. They actually had a higher percentage of sliding lower than 11th, but they ended up with the fourth pick, which obviously is going to make any sort of trade package they would put together much more attractive. Something that is funny though is that the New Orleans Pelicans ended up with the first pick of the NBA draft and no one expected that. So they are obviously going to be picking Zion Williamson. He is supposed to be the next LeBron James and they are going to be looking to want to build a team around him for their future. Apparently the Pelicans getting that number one pick does not change anything in Anthony Davis's mind. He still wants out of New Orleans, but now that the Pelicans do have that first pick, they're gonna go get Zion, they're gonna get their future LeBron James, they may be a little bit more inclined to trading Anthony Davis now because they have their future more secured and they're not just going to be losing the one of the best players in the league for pretty much nothing. Now if I'm the Pelicans and I'm looking at the Lakers trade package, I'm saying okay, the Lakers can offer me their fourth pick in the NBA draft. So now I have the first pick, the fourth pick, plus at least two members of their young core. Probably like I said earlier, most likely Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball. That's looking like a really good team. So if I'm the New Orleans Pelicans, I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe I don't like the Lakers. Maybe I don't really want to trade Anthony Davis to the Lakers, but if I'm being smart and I'm thinking of the future of my team, the Lakers trade package is honestly probably one of the best. Now, before the NBA lottery, the team that was considered to be the Lakers' biggest competition in acquiring Anthony Davis this summer was the Boston Celtics because they could offer the Pelicans Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, and multiple first round draft picks. However, none of those draft picks are as good as having the fourth overall pick in the draft. Plus, now that Kyrie Irving is apparently going to be leaving during the offseason and free agency, does it really even make sense for the Boston Celtics to trade away all of their young assets? So, I am thinking that Boston may actually pull back a little bit and not go after Anthony Davis because Kyrie's leaving. They kind of imploded too in the playoffs. So things are not going in the direction that they thought they were going. So I think Boston's going to be taking a little bit of a step back now and maybe not pursuing Anthony Davis. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm definitely keeping my fingers crossed. But unfortunately, there is one other team now that I think has moved up in being the Lakers' biggest competition to acquire Anthony Davis this summer. But before we talk about that team, I wanna take a quick second to remind you all to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Obviously, is going to be an extremely exciting off season this summer, so if you wanna keep up with your Lakers this summer, and if you just want to get in shape this summer, I love to post a lot of workout and fitness videos and fitness tips on my Instagram as well. So you can give me a follow on Twitter at Hannah underscore Kulik and on Instagram at Hannah Rose Kulik. Okay, so whereas before we all assumed that the Boston Celtics were going to be the Lakers' biggest competition in acquiring Anthony Davis, it appears like now the New York Knicks are going to be the Lakers' biggest competition. The Knicks ended up with the third pick in the NBA draft so they would obviously offer that to the Pelicans in a trade package which would mean that the Pelicans could go out and draft Zion's best friend and former college teammate RJ Barrett at number three which would obviously make Zion much happier because as we all saw on the lottery day um, Zion didn't look too happy to be possibly going to play for the New Orleans Pelicans 
But the New York Knicks also have three talented young players that they could also offer the Pelicans. They have Kevin Knox, Mitchell Robinson, and Dennis Smith Jr. as well. So all of those players combined would also be a very nice trade package for the Knicks to offer the Pelicans as well. So they are looking right now to be the Lakers' biggest competition when it comes to acquiring Anthony Davis. But I am curious, do you guys think that the Knicks or the Celtics are the Lakers' biggest competition? Let me know down in the comments below. Comment Celtics for the Boston Celtics or comment Knicks for the New York Knicks. All right, so where does this leave our Lakers? Now, obviously a Lakers trade package to the Pelicans would look a little bit like this. We'd have that fourth pick, then we would have two, maybe even possibly three members of the Lakers young core and I don't know if I necessarily want to do that. Is it really wise for the Lakers to give up so many members of their young core? We've already let D'Angelo Russell walk, Julius Randle walk for essentially nothing and now look at those young players. What would have happened to the Lakers had we have kept those guys, kept our young players around and let them develop. I mean, obviously it takes a lot of time for young players to develop. Obviously, there are some rare occasions where players come into the league and instantly have success, but for the most part, it does take a few years for them to really reach their full potential. And I'm reluctant to trade away all of the members of our young core because where are we going to be in a few years when LeBron James retires? We're gonna be in the exact same position that we were in when Kobe Bryant retired, and I don't wanna have to continue to go through this process again. It has been a rough five, six years for us Laker fans. So I'm very reluctant to trade members of our young core, our future stars, unless we are really getting something good out of it, i.e. players who are young, who are still entering their prime, like Anthony Davis, maybe even players like a Bradley Beal. Plus, like I said earlier on in this video, Anthony Davis is going to be a free agent next summer in 2020, so there is that chance that he just signs with the Lakers and we don't have to give up so many of our young assets to do so. But I'm curious, do you think that the Lakers should go all in for AD this summer? And do you think that the Lakers even realistically have a chance at being able to trade for him? Let me know down in the comments below. I can understand both opinions on this matter because Obviously, Anthony Davis is an unbelievable player. He's a top five NBA player, probably even the second best player when fully healthy. And to have a Lakers team that features both Anthony Davis and LeBron James is very exciting for me. But at the same time, I do want to be a little cautious just because I don't want to have to go through the entire rebuilding process that we've been going through these last few years when LeBron James retires. But let me know your opinions down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And until next time, Laker Hand is out. Bye, guys.